My name is Alicia. I am a Miami native. I'm super creative and artistic. And Welcome to the inaugural episode of Window to Haiti, the journey to the heart of the people. I'm your host, David Frederick. And today I have the distinct honor of having none other than Alicia Cox. Alicia, welcome. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Happy here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we, we're like, we're gonna have a chill conversation, you know, but, but, but first, before we dive deep into the things we're going to talk about, you know, uh, tell the audience who you are and uh, a bit of your background. Okay, who am I? My name is Alicia. I'm 30 years old. I'm a Miami native. I was born and raised here. kind of moved all around South Florida. My parents, um, my mother is Haitian. My father's actually Bahamian. Uh, super bad, actually. So, um, we spoke a lot of, like, I was raised in a kind of slightly more Americanized household. Um, yeah, but I, I, that's my, my background, and then I've always been super creative and artistic, and I love to read and write and create, and I kind of fell into photography and graphic design, like, genuinely just because I liked it so much, and I would see things online, and I just wanted to recreate them, so I would. Um, and I was learning the entire time, and before I knew it, somebody asked me if I could like make them a flyer for an event, and I was like, wait a minute, I can do that. I, actually, I can do that. <laughs> and I made it, and they loved it, and um, I just started from there, so... And it was the same with photography. I picked up photography in high school. And by the time I graduated college, it would be like somebody asking me to take their headshots for work or something. And they love it so much that they tell a friend. And now people are asking me what my rates are. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I've been doing that for a long time. Photography, graphic design for since I was 16, so 14, 15 years now. Experience on the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, my, I was hanging out with my friends and reading as of right now and getting some light. That's, that's a bit about me, I think. So, we're going to talk and explore those things a bit, a bit further. Um, you, you mentioned your, your mom's with me. Yes. She's from Lekai or Okai. Okai, yeah, yeah. You know, you said something about Lekai, something about Okai. Tell me a bit more about that. Oh, um, since you were born here, you you said you grew up more like Americanized. Have you ever um, come across the Haitian culture? Absolutely. I mean, as a kid, obviously it was a lot different. My mom, she had us pretty young, and like, I don't know about what everybody else knows, but being Haitian was not cool in the 90s in, in South Florida. It was not cool. So she just kind of preferred to lay low as far as uh, being proud, I guess. And my grandparents are super devout Christians, and she married a Bahamian man, so they weren't very close either. So, like I said, it was pretty Americanized, but I always knew my culture and my roots. We still would visit my grandparents. And when we went over there, my grandmother was giving us coffee and Haitian bread from when I was like seven or eight years old. Like, even letting us taste caramelized, all of that. <laughs> so, in a sense, it wasn't talk loudly, but actually all the different things from your grandmother's household you, you kind of still it was still around you absolutely and then when we um when i got older when i turned i think it was 14 or 15 um my parents separated we actually moved in with my grandparents and lived with them for a while and that was totally like i was fully immersed i even got a little bit of an accident living with them for, for so long <laughs> It was totally different being with my grandparents every day and um, being a part of like, it was like very religious Haitian households and um, we were eating my mother every single day and you know, we had 
<laughs> McDonald's at home to make chicken nuggets and <laughs> cut a chop of potatoes for us. So very just like homemade and doing everything with our hands and lots of prayer and just togetherness. It was it was nice to even hear the Tweet Creole all the time. I can't understand it as well. Um, but I, it felt good to hear it all the time. Um, and my grandfather used to be a pastor, so there's also that kind of like, you know, those strong patriarchal vibes <laughs> as well. So just the food and having family around, I feel like Haitians are very family oriented. And even if we, even if we don't get along, we're gonna have our family back, you know? Um, and it really taught me how to like be there for my family, um, just being with them, like through thick and thin. Just that's this is all you have at the end of the day. Like that's your support system at the end of the day. And I feel like I really love that about like the Haitian part of my of myself. Yeah. And did you feel like, like not just did you uh, tell me about the experience of going from raising as just American and you say the night is the experience we had just to be proud to protect mm-hmm. your civilization. Mm-hmm. So now you are in a household where your grandmother is all about Haitian Creoles left, right, and center. Yeah, mm-hmm. how was that? Um, I'm not gonna lie, at first I wasn't happy, like I just thought it wasn't gonna be fun because, you know, they're just very strict, there was definitely a change on, um, like, my education, like, what was I gonna be doing, I, like I said, I'm super creative and I always wanted to do the arts, but as soon as I got to my grandparents' house, they're like, well, you gonna be a nurse, really, you gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, what's going on, um, but other than that, it was mostly, like, the food changed <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the food changed a lot. I didn't realize how little of my, you know, cultural food that I was eating. We were eating a lot of like American spaghetti and like meat and stuff when I was a kid. And um, my grandmother was, you know, she's one of those grandmothers that are just cooking all day. When she's done cooking breakfast, she's cooking lunch. When she's done cooking lunch, she's cooking dinner. And she's just kind of in the kitchen all the time. Um, so the food I was eating changed a lot. I really love leggings. I really love leggings. I really love Rio. My grandmother makes the best soup ever. And I'm not saying that because she's my grandma. I'm saying it because it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It was like we always look forward to going to my grandparents' house um, on, you know, January first, the beginning of the year, um, to go have soup. And she's teaching my mom how to do it now. It's passing it down a generation. So. I would just be there smelling it, you know, I don't really, I don't cook, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I wasn't paying attention to the cooking process, but I was smelling all the smells and getting, coming in for a taste from the spoon and stuff like that. Um, and everybody coming over for a bowl and all my non-Haitian friends asking for a bowl and not giving them anything. <laughs> but that's what I mostly remember, to be honest, just like being a kid and waiting for the soup to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in the series, you know, uh, we, we cannot talk about Haitian culture, Haitian history, um, Haitian proverb without having it with a cup of coffee. It's, uh, and uh, earlier you alluded to the fact that you used to drink coffee and bread with your grandma. So tell me about that. Um, that was always dope. Honestly, it was like a bonding experience because we didn't understand it. Obviously, I'm, I'm a kid. Why are you giving me coffee? It's the first thing I'm going to think. But, yeah, my grandma, she would always have the, I love Haitian bread. It's so big. And she, <laughs> she'd give us some coffee with a ton of sugar and milk in it. And we would sit around and she would, you know, ask us how we're doing, ask us about life, how's school, and 
tell us about how she's praying for us and ask us if we got Jesus in our life. And it was nice. We were literally just talking, just over coffee. And I really loved, she taught us how to, you know, dunk the bread into the coffee and eat it that way, which was my favorite. Um, yeah, it was really like a way to bond with my grandmother as a kid. And, uh, free sugar. You've done many um, work for me before, right? Um, the, uh, my first book, Black Eye, you designed the cover. Phenomenal, right? And um, this upcoming book, Power Black Eye, it's, it's a 30 day devotional uh, book of Haitian proverb mixed with history, mixed with uh, uh, faith, and everything like that. Um, do you, because you said your grandma, you, you know, was very religious, so do you remember any Haitian proverb you've heard from your grandma? Yeah, I don't remember how to say it in Creole, but I do remember in English it was uh, something like the mill grinds with the teeth it has. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you do what you can with what you have, and um, that's really life. It's always gotten me through, because sometimes you... Life is not what you think it's going to be. Life is not, even now, set up in a way that you can imagine always. But you have to move forward and always have something to help you move forward. It might not be what you are expecting, but it's definitely got me there. Yeah, and um, I also remember that proverb too. So, like, you know, it's Moulin uh, Manger Soudan Ligayen. It's like it's, it's like the meal grind, you know, with, 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 with uh, what it has. Like just like you said, you know, it's you make do with what you have. You know, it's the, if 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 whatever things you have, um, it, it's it's what you have. It's it's there's also that that uh, passage in the Bible that says you can do all things through Christ. You know, who strengthen you and and, and, and things like that. So. Um, t- how, in what ways you think that Haitian proverb has has, 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 has sustained you through, through life and through who you are? Man, I mean, as a, as a creative, like, you really don't always have, like, stable working conditions. There are a lot of times where I have a lot, I've got a lot of clients, I've, I've got more work than I can have the time to do, and then there's times where there's no money coming in, there's, you know, nothing going on, and I have to create a way for myself. I have to think of something new, and um, when I feel hopeful is always when I turn to that, um, to that proverb, because I know that this is, as long as I'm alive, mm-hmm. there's something that I can do. Yeah. Um, and it, sometimes it takes more time than, than others to remember that, but I mean, getting through college and then after college, when you think, you know, life is going to be smooth and it's not. <laughs> and, you know, first couple of jobs and getting your first big girl job and... Like I said, creating, having clients, not having clients, feeling inspired, not feeling inspired, kind of. I'm in one of those cycles right now, really, where I'm grinding with what I got. <laughs> um, because, you know, something, you know, is always better than nothing. Um, so, yeah. That's, that, that's awesome. Now, talking about the process of designing that cover and then also you know feel free to share some early conversation we've had you know in 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 designing that cover and things like that well whenever i design anything to be honest i want i like to get as much context as possible and i actually learned this from working at church doing graphic design at, at church because um making the graphics for the message every week was like a really tricky job like it was a really big job you know um so taking going from taking that so seriously um I feel like also led me to where I I would like to get the feeling of what I'm doing how do you feel about what you're doing and what's the what led you here um and you're always good at really providing all of that context of like 
just wanting to bridge the diaspora and wanting to make it feel like home and wanting to make people feel warm and like welcome when they see your book covers. So trying to find all of the imagery that makes me feel that and then hearing all of the imagery that will make you feel that and combining those things is typically how I get to like my design at the end of the, the day. And with the my old like pie cover, I really wanted to convey that that feeling that you were trying to give me. You just told me, you know, I want there to be coffee. And I, so I wanted to make sure it looked like a table that somebody was eating at. Nothing too neat, nothing too like perfect. Really looked like, you know, somebody's been sitting there across from somebody else and they just had a really good conversation. It's the, the vibe I was trying to give off. And even with Black Eye and Book, I wanted that feeling of the boy being small and the house being so big, but him still approaching it anyway because that light was calling him. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how my brain works. <laughs> no, no, no. Exactly. It's just like, it's the details mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that speak louder than the, all the big things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about my book cover, like I just like, he's talking about the big house, the small little kid with the light. It's just like, there were so many things going on if you're looking at the cover, but you still see that light. It's, it, it, in a lot of ways, it's a representation of, of uh, us Haitians, you know, you know, with what's going on in Haiti right now, of what's going on here as well. It's, there, there's always, you can feel there's always, uh, um, like, there's, there's always the tumultuous uh, mm -hmm. uh, things going on around us, but we still have to keep the hope. It's just like, keep the hope alive. You know, then that light for me was that hope. Absolutely. And I, I've only hear like really amazing things about Haiti when I like look back into history myself and like, talk to people that I know that don't know about Haiti, but when I was with my family, when I was living with my grandparents, with my mom, and hearing her on the phone talking to aunts and cousins who are still in Haiti or people who moved here, um, talking about what, you know, Haitian people are really going through on a day-to-day -day basis, it made me want to, it makes me want to learn more, it makes me want to figure out how to get more connected and get closer, and um, I feel like I really also learned a lot working with you and making those covers to be honest so I feel like it's like just the beginning for me yeah <laughs> and, and uh, just that too um, my hope is for Haitian and non-Haitian and like especially uh, through this book Paola Kai uh, it's to feel connected somehow you know um, either uh, you feel like the way you grew up or around the table uh, earlier you talked about coffee and, and bread, the coffee and bread uh, that's also part of the cover uh, in a way um, and, and for me coffee is not just uh, something you do have in community but also it's like if you're having at a, slu a sluggish day and you say I need a coffee kind of too break me back up but but is that intersection with your faith too you know it's just like if you're feeling in certain ways you can just pick up the bible and pick up the word and then you feel like you know spiritually you're you're alive again you know and in you know, that that the aspect i want uh, people to not just from the cover but also opening the book going like re going through it day by day and and find something that they can um that can awaken the, the spirit and the body as well. Um, now, looking forward, what aspects of Haiti's culture or heritage would you like to explore further through your work in design and storytelling? Um, I'm trying to go to Haiti. Like, I've only been once as a really young child to meet like my great grandmother. I was like two or three, so. As far as like being in Haiti, I don't know what that's like at all. Um, and I want to experience that. I want to see my mom's homeland with my own eyes. And I want to create the things that I see from there. I want to be inspired by the land. Um, 
which I don't know, I guess is a little complicated right now. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just want to learn more about what's going on today, what's going on right now. I feel like I've done a lot of, you know, research and reading about the revolution and things like that. Um, I know talking about food, food and coffee and all that, but just daily conditions, the, the daily condition, human condition for people in Haiti, I want to know more about. I want it to be more feasible for me to go there. And I'm trying to learn <laughs> Creole now so I can actually talk to people and watching a lot more things that are incredible from pastors, from movies, anything, honestly, radio, um, yeah, just getting more to, getting to know more about the everyday conditions of my people. And, you know, as you were saying this, uh, there's um, a quote from someone, I don't remember the person per se, that says, if for, for Christian, you know, uh, a, the, the, the connection is to go to Jerusalem or for the Catholic uh, is to go to the Vatican and, um, and for the Muslim is to go to Mecca and, you know, uh, and for us black people is, 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 is Haiti stands as that, you know, where you, 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 you truly feel whole by visiting that land, you know, like for, for, for some reason you feel like a rebirth uh, of the spirit of, the, of, of your awareness, you know, by being in Haiti yeah, in, in a lot of ways. I'm trying to feel that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, and where do you think you'd like to go or what, what places in Hokai do you, do you know of any place or, or you just, you just want to go at least figure it out? I just want to go. I want to be on the beach for sure. I know my family has some land out there somewhere whose family doesn't have a little piece of land out in Haiti. Um, and I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what it's called, but it's in Lake Kai, and um, that's definitely where I want to go first. I want to see the land. My family, they're trying to build an orphanage and a clinic. Um, so I would love to visit there and help out there. Definitely just want to see the landscape. And, and first and foremost. Um, and how does it feel to be part of a project uh, that aims to promote the Haitian culture um, and wisdom to a broader audience? It feels amazing. Honestly, I'm telling everybody about it. I think I think this is so dope because I I operate. I I also organize, um, so I just operate in a lot of like progressive circles and like people who are trying to um, create more power amongst like black people and people of color and they all look to Haiti with a lot of reverence and a lot of respect because of us you know being one of the first countries or the first country to, to liberate ourselves and everything we know about the revolution so I just I know a lot of people who have a lot of respect for Haiti who are not Haitian. I know a lot of people like me who are are Haitian, but they don't they're not as like they don't speak Creole. They never really been to the country, so maybe they don't know a lot. And then I also have my friends who are like their their parents are like straight up, you know. So they were, <laughs> so they were raised like super Haitian, and I think that um, all of those people are a little bit disconnected, to be honest, from from the country as it is today. And I feel like with, with a country that's so, Haiti is just so important to black culture and to Caribbean culture. And I feel like we can only be free, you know, when we are all free. And you can't change the future unless you know your past. And so I feel like it's important for all of us to learn about Haiti. And it's a lot 
it's a lot more exciting and juicy than a lot of people think. <laughs> but not just that, but you know, today there's there's issues issues that Haitian people are dealing with today that people aren't even aware of. Um, and I'm and I know that they would love to learn about. Um, I feel like every black revolutionary that I've ever read about has something amazing to say about Haiti that I've never heard of. Like I said, as a kid, it was not cool to be Haitian. Like, it's not something you told anybody unless you wanted to get bullied. But now it's everybody's. <laughs> the flag. They, yeah. Everybody, yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 it's a lot like, different. It, 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 do you think it's the opposite? Uh, yeah. I, I think once people started learning more um, about the country and our origins, that it changed a lot. And like I said, like I feel like it's a really good way to liberate the minds of our people. It's teaching them about Haiti's history and um, telling them about how Haiti, what Haiti's doing today. Um, and how it's been, like the world has affected Haiti. Um, because it's like a microscope and a microcosm of the world, really. And, you know, imperialism and capitalism and things like that. And the ways that, you know, Haiti has evolved. So I'm really excited. I think it's dope. <laughs> Good. And it, uh, what advice would you give to aspiring designers who also who grew up... Um, not knowing much about Haiti, but we are in that moment of time. We are in that moment in time um, where there's everybody find it's cool to be Haitian. So, what advice do I, what advice do you have for those aspiring graphic designers or people who are artistic as yourself? Um, I would say maybe start with some documentaries and. If you're visual like me, I really love documentaries or podcasts, something to listen to about 1804. Like, really, just start there. And um, looking up your favorite designers and Haiti, or your favorite revolutionaries and Haiti, and hearing what they have to say about um, what they think of Haiti just so you can start there and, and know kind of and go in that direction or whatever direction suits you best. That's what I found um, that kind of helped things seep in the most. I remember um, seeing Kwame Ture talking about Haiti and I was like, wow. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, well, do, you, do you remember what um, Kwame Ture was saying about Haiti? That, about how Haiti was the first democratic country um, and how Haiti was the first, they were the first enslaved people to liberate themselves and that if you want to learn about freedom, look to Haiti. That blew my mind. So, it really, it's very inspiring and all I need is a little inspiration for my work. So, like, that's why I say that's what designers should do. It's, it's inspiring. Um, and it's a good way to learn. Now, when you saw that video, because earlier you said you were a passion of reading. Yeah. So you saw that video. You tell the whole story. You have to tell the whole story. So you saw that as a small clip, and then what happened after? I started reading his uh, his autobiography. Um, so I'm learning everything about him. Uh, I'm learning a lot about him. I'm learning about Snake and MAG and his whole life story from watching that clip. Yeah. So. Um, what are the new readings or current readings? Well, oh, I'm actually reading The Common Wind, which is a book on the Haitian Revolution. Okay, what's the name? The Common Wind. Yeah, that's a good book. To, uh, as we conclude the, the talk, right, how do you envision the impact of a Window to Haiti series in promoting Haitian culture and wisdom to a wider audience beyond Haitian um, background or Haitian descent? How do I think it'll impact people? Yeah, how do you envision that the impact of this series, Window to Haiti? Um, like I said, I, I really feel like it'll help liberate people's minds. You know, like the revolution will not be televised. It happens in the mind and I feel like learning about Haiti 
will get people's wheels turning about even more and even more countries and Af- maybe back to Africa and I think it's a really amazing step in the, in the right direction um, I think if once we broaden our minds past what we know it leads to beautiful amazing things like we need more unity um, because especially in South Florida, like there's just a melting pot of cultures, but we're still all separated at the same time. And finding commonalities um, is how we come together. Wow! Thank you. Uh, we'll leave it as that. The revolution will not be televised; <laughs> it will happen in your mind. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Alicia. Great talking to you. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey to Lekai, or as some would say it, Okai. We had uh, uh, Alicia Cox, who is the uh, designer, uh, the graphic designer behind uh, Paul Lakai, a 30-day devotional of uh, a Haitian proverb. We were talking about her background, uh, her um, stories about her grandma with uh, a coffee and bread. Um, so we hope you had, uh, you enjoyed this episode, this interview episode, and can't wait to have you uh, for all the rem- remaining um, episodes. Like I, like I said at the beginning, this is the window to Haiti. We open that blind to, for you to, have, to see and experience Haiti through our lens, through our Haitian proverb, one city at a time, one cup of coffee at a time. Thank you, and see you next week.